Good morning, church. I, I want to begin by reading a chapter, uh, or a few verses from a chapter, chapter 40 of Isaiah, beginning to read from verse 28. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? He neither faints, neither is he weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This morning we are continuing in our series entitled Life, a Traveler's Guide. And I think this is the 12th meth- message that we've uh, given on this series. All our messages are on our website and um, there'll be some details as to how you can access those um, coming up later. It's good to have the folks with us, not only from New Life, but it's also good to have pe- uh, people connecting with us and churches connecting with us, both in the UK and throughout the world. This is a bit surreal. Uh, I've never ever done this before. Um, my congregation is two at the moment. It's uh, Luke, uh, Pastor Luke and Pastor Tim. And um, we're here in uh, Stockton Church, our Stockton Church. And, uh, but I'm also a reminder that perhaps today I could be preaching to the biggest congregation and having the privilege to do that, preaching to the biggest congregation that I've ever, ever preached to. My subject this morning is when your walk comes to a halt, break down. And I believe that God has a word for us both as an individual, individuals and also as the corporate body of Christ, the church. The Bible describes our Christian journey and it uses metaphors such as walking and running. 1 John 2 verse 6, walk even as he walked. Walk in love, Ephesians 5, verse 2. Walk in light, 1 John 1, verse 7. Galatians 5, 25. Walk by the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Paul says, run in such a way as to obtain the prize. In Philippians 3, 14, he says, run towards the goal. In Galatians 2, 2, he says, run, running, uh, that I might have run in vain. Galatians 5, verse 7 you were running well. Who hindered you? Run with endurance the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12 verse 1. I I want you to notice that in in both of these metaphors, it talks about walking and running. It's describing the Christian journey. It's speaking of walking and running as a type of the Christian journey that we are on. It's, It's speaking of progress. You can't walk or you can't run by standing still. You've got to make some progress. And I want to say, folks, God wants each one of us to make some progress in our Christian journey. The Bible says we are to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. The Bible uh, oft times depicts the journey as a pilgrimage. Uh, that we are on. Psalm 84 verse 5 says, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. Now one of the greatest books that has ever been written was written by a man called John Bunyan. And he wrote a book called Pilgrim's Progress, depicting the Christian journey. Now I want you to notice it was Pilgrim's Progress and not Pilgrim's Regress. When Paul spoke to Timothy, his young protege, he said that if he did certain things, his progress would appear to all. So God wants us to progress. He wants us to move on. He wants us to keep motivated in our service for God. Our subject this morning is not about making progress. It's about when progress is halted, when your walk comes to a halt. It's talking about breakdown. There are breakdowns of all descriptions. I guess the three most common are a physical breakdown, an emotional breakdown, 
and a mental breakdown. Now, I think we all know what it means when someone has a breakdown. When you have a breakdown, everything grinds to a halt. And you are stuck in a situation that you need some help to get out of. The breakdown we are looking at this morning is, of course, a spiritual breakdown. It's when your walk comes to a halt, when your race stops, when the journey that you have been on, you're standing still. Now, you, are, you might have experienced a time in your life when you have suffered a spiritual breakdown, and you have a story to tell today as to how that breakdown occurred, and uh, the, the lessons that you learned during that time. Or, of course, you may be going through, at this moment in time, you might be going through a spiritual breakdown. You might feel this morning that your journey in God has stopped. It's halted. Or there may be those with us this morning who are heading towards a spiritual breakdown. Three areas that I want us to look at this morning. How do spiritual breakdowns happen? What do you do if you've suffered a breakdown? And how do you recover and get going again? For those of us who have driven a vehicle for any length of time, there's every likelihood that there have been those occasions in our lives when we've suffered what is termed a mechanical breakdown. When the vehicle has stopped and we've needed assistance, the vehicle has broken down and we've needed assistance to get it going again. We've had to call the AA, the RSC, green flag, or if Alan Peacock is in shouting distance, we, we call for Alan, and I've done that on more than one occasion. None of us are immune from a spiritual breakdown. Breakdowns do happen. And no one is immune from them. I've seen many a car on the back of a breakdown truck with a new vehicle registration on the back. And you wouldn't expect a, a new car to break down. And yet even new cars break down. You know, friends, the Bible says that he that thinks he stands should take heed lest he fall. When Isaiah wrote, he said, people you wouldn't expect have broken down. Even the youths have grown faint and weary. The young men have utterly fallen. You wouldn't expect youths or young men to have a breakdown. Yet Isaiah here is saying, these breakdowns have happened. And none of us are immune. The greatest man who ever lived was John the Baptist. His walk came to a halt when he found himself in a prison cell, when he found himself cut off from everyone that he associated with, his, his loved ones, and his ministry had come to a halt. And John, in his prison cell, had some serious doubts as to whether Jesus really was the Messiah. There in that prison cell, he was riddled with doubt. David a man after God's own heart, the Bible tells us. He too suffered a, a spiritual breakdown. When his walk with God came to a halt, his journey stopped. You know, friends, when your spiritual journey comes to a standstill, when it comes to a halt, there's always a cause. And the root of that cause, of course, is sin. Right at the root of every breakdown is sin. And the sin takes its form in many guises. There is neglect. The Bible says we are not to neglect this great salvation. But breakdowns happen when we don't maintain our spiritual life. When we don't get that regular pit stop where we can get built up and fueled up and ready for the journey. We all need regular maintenance on a daily basis. 
We all need that daily renewal. And we neglect it at our pearl. You know, the Bible says that God daily loads us with benefits. Daily, he loads us with benefits. His mercies are new every morning. And yet we don't stop at times long enough to avail ourselves of the benefits and of the goodness of God that he wants to pour upon our lives. We suffer a breakdown when we ignore the warning signs. You know those lights that come on on the dashboard and uh, warning us that something's wrong. We neglect those lights at our pearl. We can pretend not everything's okay. And yet inevitably those warning lights are there to warn us that we are heading that something is, is wrong and needs putting right. You know, when, when that petrol warning light comes on, that petrol in the tank is getting very low, and uh, we keep on running on fresh air, thinking we can, we can go that extra mile or that extra few miles before we need topping up. I want to tell you, friends, breakdowns are inevitable when we ignore the warning signs. And for every one of us, we all get those warning signs in our lives. If our walk with God, in our walk with God, we, we find, if we find ourselves running on empty, if we've ignored the signals, then can I say a breakdown is inevitable. You can only run on empty for so long. I've also discovered that it's not always the big things that cause breakdowns. Sometimes it's the small things or what we would define as small. The Bible says it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. I can remember a time that when carburetors were on cars, the old carburetor, and um, I can remember a time when my car broke down. It lost power. There was no power at all. And mechanics had looked at it, S several mechanics. The engine had come out. Um, the pistons had been reground and put back in. And I'd spent a, quite a lot of money only to discover that it didn't solve the problem. The problem was solved when one mechanic took the carburetor to bits and found that in the diaphragm there was a little hole, a little pinprick that was causing air to be sucked into the carburetor. And that little pinprick cost me hundreds of pounds. And uh, that was the, the, the problem that I'd experienced. You know, sometimes we can categorize sin as big or, or small. Can I say this morning, sin is sin. There's no difference between big sins or little sins. The Bible says if we offend in one point, we are guilty of all. We have all sinned. There's none righteous, no, not one. Paul writes, lay aside every weight and the sin which easily ensnares us. He writes to the Roman church, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies. The reason for spiritual breakdown is because we haven't laid that sin aside. It's because we have let sin reign in our lives. Can I say, friends, sin, no matter how small we think it is, if we let it go unchecked, it will eventually lead to a breakdown, to a standstill. Before even the breakdown comes, before the stop comes, can I say, if we allow sin in our lives, it will still hinder our progress. The Bible says that the sin which so easily ensnares you. In other words, any sin that is in our lives, any trace of sin, it will ensnare us, it will entangle us and halt our progress. What do you do when your walk does come to a halt? Well, I think the first thing, you become aware that you've got a problem. You mightn't have been aware before, but you become aware that you've got a problem. Sometimes it's a big problem. You recognize the problem. You know, you can fool everyone else, but you can't fool yourself and God. You know when things are not right. 
You know when your walk has come to a, to, a, to a standstill. It's not a bit of good when you have a breakdown, burying your head in the sand like the proverbial ostrich and saying, it doesn't matter. It's important that we identify where the problem lies. David, when he suffered a, a spiritual breakdown, he found himself in a deep pit of despair. And he asked God to search his heart. He asked God to help him to identify. Of course, he knew what his sin was. His sin was with Bathsheba. But he, but he, 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 he came to the very root of the problem. And of course, Psalm 51 is David's prayer of repentance. Once you've identified where the problem lies, then we've got to be ruthless with it. Jesus said, if your right hand offends you, cut it off. If your right eye offends you, pluck it out. What did he mean? Physically do that? No. What he was really saying, be ruthless with it. Be ruthless with sin. Deal with sin ruth, 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 ruthlessly. Lay aside every weight. Lay it aside and the sin which so easily ens ensnares us. Paul likened this spiritual journey to the athlete in a race. And of course, the athlete in the race is stripped for the contest, throwing off anything that hinders his progress. We, we need to do that with sin. We need to throw it off. We need to lay it aside. On Facebook yesterday, there was a, a caption that caught my attention. It said this, If only we treated sin the way we do the coronavirus. And that, as Christians, that has got to be our attitude to sin. We've got to stay away from it. We've got to be clear of it. If our walk and progress in God has been altered, how do we get going again? How do we get back in the race? How, how do we start to walk again? Perhaps more importantly, how do we keep going? How do we continue to grow in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? How can we walk and not faint? How can we run and not get weary? The cause of our breakdown must be dealt with. And God has a remedy for it. We read in 1 John 1 verse 8. God's remedy for dealing with our sin. If, if, there's a big if there. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repentance is an old-fashioned word. You don't hear much about it these days. But what it really means is to turn around. Is to forsake it. You see, friends, it's not just a matter of confessing sin. We all know of people who confess sin and then go and do exactly the same thing again. It's forsaking sin. And that involves repentance. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, Whoever confesses and forsakes his sin. Notice confession and forsaking it. It's no good confessing it and then going back to it again and again and again so it becomes a way of life. The Bible says we have got to forsake it because that person will obtain mercy from the Lord. Before we can move on in our walk with God, in our Christian journey, sin has got to be dealt with. And we need to ask help. The Bible says we are to call on the name of the Lord. For whoever calls on his name will find deliverance. And at times we need to call on the name of the Lord. If appropriate, we need to ask the assistance of a brother or a sister in Christ. The Word of God does tell us that our first port of call is to God. 
but there may be times we need to enlist the help of a brother or a sister in Christ who we can trust. James 5 verse 16 says, Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. Now you can only do that when you have trust in a brother and sister in Christ who you know is going to help you and not talk about it everywhere else. Someone who is able to keep their counsel. I believe God's word that if we do what he's asked us to do, he will do what he has promised to do. And what has he promised to do? If we will confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we do what God has asked us to do, he can be assured that he will do what he has promised to do. And once that has happened, we can start walking again. We can start running, running again. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And even though he may fall, he will not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Paul said he's been knocked down, but he hadn't been knocked out. Do not gloat over me, my enemy, for though I have fallen, my walk has stopped. I will rise again. Paul said, one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind, reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And once the slate has been wiped clean, I want to tell you, friends, you can get going again. One man said, you can't keep a good man down. Let me tell you the steps of a good man. And there's no goodness in us, but our goodness and our righteousness comes from him. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. How do we keep going? How do we keep going once we've sorted the mess out, once we've acknowledged where the problem is? How do we keep going? To a group of believers in Ephesus who had come to a standstill, who had come to a halt, God's word came to them. It came to them bringing the remedy and also the instruction as how to get going again. And this was the word of the Lord that came to the church in Ephesus. Remember from where you've fallen. Repent and do the first works. Notice that remember. Remember. Remember where you've fallen from. Remember where you once were. Remember that there was a time when you were running well. Remember there was a time when your heart was seeking after God. When, remember, the fire of God that burned in your heart. When you wanted everyone that you met to know about how much Jesus loved them. Remember how you longed for his word. Remember how you longed for his presence. To go into that secret place and to pray there to the Father who is in the secret place. And how that hour seemed like just ten minutes. And when you were there, your heart was burning within you. Remember how you loved his presence. Remember the time when you didn't forsake meeting together with your other brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the time when you loved to go to the house of God with the people of God, when fellowship with your brothers and sisters was a priority. God said to this church in Ephesus, remember. Remember those former days. And now it's not like that anymore. 
Your walk has stopped. Your walk has halted. And then he said, repent and do the first, part, the first works. Repent and do the first works. Get back to those days again. Do what you did before. Get back into his presence. Get back with the people of God. Get back with his word. Get back with your heart burning again for God. Can I say, friends, as I bring this word to a close, there is a place of renewal and there is a place of refreshing. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You can get some fuel back into your empty tank. God has got a full supply. There is no impoverishment with him. The Bible says, be filled with the Spirit. And I want to say there is enough of God's Holy Spirit for you and for every brother and sister in Christ throughout the entire world. But we've got to come and drink. He that is thirsty, let him come to me and let him drink. Let the Holy Spirit this morning bring refreshing and renewal to those dry and barren places of your life. You, if, if you do that, the prophet Isaiah says, you will run and you will not be weary. You will walk and not faint. You will make progress again. And today can be your moment, your moment of recovery. Today is the day that you can start to walk and start to run again. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray this morning for all who are watching this message, whose journey is halted, who have come to a standstill. They know, Lord, that they're not moving in you as they once were. Today, I pray that today shall be the turnaround in their lives, that from this day they will start to walk again. I pray too, Lord, for those who are aware that a breakdown perhaps hasn't happened yet, but they know, even though they haven't come to a standstill, they know that they are heading for it. I pray that this word this morning will be a, a word of warning to everyone, Lord. Thank you that, Lord, it's not too late for anyone who is heading to that place of standstill to alter their course. I pray that today, this day, will be a new day beginning for them. Finally, Lord, I pray for every one of your children that are watching here with us today that you will bring refreshing and you will bring renewal to our lives. Set our hearts on fire, I pray, O oh God. Help us to apply our hearts to seek your face. Your word says, seek my face. Seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. You've promised, Lord, if we will draw near to you, you will draw near to us. And so I pray for every child of God this morning that, Lord, you will bring refreshing and renewal to their lives. That, Lord, we will be running and we will be making progress. We will be making a mark for God on our generation. Thank you, Lord. Help us to put those shoes on, those shoes of the gospel. Help us to run with the gospel, Lord, to those who stand in need of a saviour. We love you this morning, and we thank you for sharing your word with us, Lord, and pray that, Lord, our walk with you and our race, Lord, this journey of life will be one of great momentum. In Jesus' name, amen.